Hi everyone, it's Danny. Alrighty, exciting video today. We get the chance to take a look at some orchid products and try them out with some orchids. And if you didn't already recognize the iconic shape of these products, they are orchid top products. And they're quite unique in their design and their functions. Now I've known them for about two years now and I was pretty impressed and intrigued. You might know that in my care, my orchid care, I do provide a lot of ventilation inside the pot. I think this is really important for epiphyte orchids as orchid roots really need a lot of air. This can also keep you safe from root rot. For this reason, I actually customize my plastic pots wherever I can. But with these pots, it is absolutely unnecessary to provide extra ventilation holes. They already have a lot of aeration through their design. So this is why I am actually very excited to try them out. So Orkitop, thank you so much for sending me these pots. I have to say they're quite lovely. I didn't realize that they could be so cute in person. Also, thank you so much for sending me the media. This is kiwi bark, and this is the first time that I use this. I've never used anything else than plain bark chips, and also this is expanded clay, pretty much like Lekka beads, but it does look a bit better in my opinion. I really dislike the round shape of Lekka beads. Okay, let's start by talking a little bit about the products, and then we'll go on to repot an orchid in one of these pots. So the material these pots are made of is safe polycarbonate, food safe, so it's not toxic for your orchids or for yourself. Also, the dye they used is again food dye, so it is not toxic. Now, these pots come in three sizes. This is the small size and it has a diameter of 10 centimeters. This is the medium size and it has a diameter of 13 centimeters. And this is the largest size. It has a diameter of 18 centimeters. As you might have noticed, these pots already come with a tray, a sort of a dish. But luckily, the dish is removable. Also, if you can notice, the dish has a sort of a raised ring. So this means that your orchid will not sit with its roots in water, actually. Now, this particular pot has some hooks on the top. This is because you can actually hang this pot if you'd like to. And they also provide you with some hangers, which look pretty, pretty cute. All you need to do is find a hook and then install them on top of these hooks and you're ready to go. Now, because the tray is removable, you have the option to either soak the orchid or just water it from above as needed. Now, I'll add a link in the description of this video below where you can check out the Orchid Top store and you can see all the products available. Practically, you can find these pots in various colors. You can also find them in clear plastic like this one or in white. Now, as a bonus, I have also been sent a sort of a fertilizer. I think I'm going to try this as a foliar fertilizer because I've never tried it. Either way, it is a small quantity for the amount of orchids that I have. So the orchid which will be potted in one of these pots will also receive this fertilizer as foliar feeding. I've never tried it. I'm really curious. So why not? Okay, now that we know a little bit more about the products, let's continue with the repot. I think Phalaenopsis orchids in general will do perfect in these types of pots because Phalaenopsis do like a lot of air around the roots. So today I will try out one of the pots with my mini Phalaenopsis orchid. You might know this one. It's the J-Host Pink Girl. And some of you guys really, really love this orchid. It is also slightly fragrant. I actually care a lot about this orchid, but as you can see, it is due for a good repot. Okay, now on their website, they suggest that you use two parts kiwi bark and one part expanded clay. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I have to say kiwi bark smells nothing like pine bark. It actually has a sort of a minty fragrance. It's actually pretty fresh. So I'm really curious how my orchids will do in kiwi bark. Okay, so I will take two measures of kiwi bark and one measure of clay. Now with any type of clay, you kind of need to rinse this because it is a soft material and through transport and movement, it kind of leaves behind the debris. So I'm going to go rinse this off, come back and I'm going to do my mix. Okay, so my clay is now rinsed, I can make my mix. Now I took the liberty to prepare my orchid off camera. My usual routine is to unpot the orchid, remove as much of the old media as possible from the root system, rinse the roots with water and then with hydrogen peroxide 3%. That is just my routine. If you have a different routine, then just use your normal routine. Okay, so first thing is to add a layer of media on the bottom of the pot. Then I'm gonna place my orchid inside the pot, trying to center it. 
and trying to arrange the roots inside the pot. All that's left now is to add media around the roots. Okay, my orchid is almost done, but just to make sure that the media went down the pot, I'll just give it a little tap and see if I need to add more media. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna do is go to the sink and give this orchid a good watering. This way I will flush out any other debris I might have in the media. Okay, so my orchid is watered, we are done with the repotting, so now a few ideas about what I just experienced. Now first off, the kiwi bark is so different from pine bark. If you've never tried kiwi bark, you'll have a little bit of a shock about the smell. It's minty, sort of sharp in a way. I don't know. It smells kind of good, but if you're not acquainted to it, you will have a little bit of a shock, particularly because the smell is quite a bit powerful. I personally like the smell, but you might want to be careful with that. Now, when I rinsed the orchid, there was absolutely no debris coming from this bark. So actually, this is such a clean bark. I've actually never used anything cleaner than this. It's absolutely clean and it really doesn't need any rinsing prior to using. The clay, on the other hand, really needs rinsing, just like any other type of clay, whether it's leka or anything else. It's just the nature of the material to be quite soft and from the movement to leave behind a sort of a dust, a very fine dust. So be careful with this one, try to not inhale it, wash it before you repot an orchid using this media. Now the mixture itself is quite heavy, which is actually good because I really don't like my orchids to be bumped over. Also this tray and the display helps because it is quite stable as you can see so the whole media the weight of the media and uh, the pot itself the way it's presented is really really stable in my opinion and from an aesthetic point of view well this is really a personal choice I personally I like it I would place this as a centerpiece let's say this orchid would be in bloom this pot is perfect for actually placing it inside the house on the table I don't know I like it but then again this is a personal opinion if you don't like plastic in general, you might not like this either. So repotting this orchid was pretty much a joy for me. If I didn't wear gloves, I bet I wouldn't have splinters under my fingernails. Usually with normal pine bark, I do get some debris and splinters, but this thing really doesn't have any debris. Anyway, I use gloves because that's just me, but if you don't want to use gloves, you can just skip it. There's really nothing toxic here. Now the question is, how fast will this dry out? Because it is so A-rated, I predict it will dry out pretty, pretty fast. So the con will be that in a very dry, maybe very hot environment, this thing will need frequent, frequent watering. The pro of this is that you're absolutely safe from root rot. I don't know if it's possible for an orchid to obtain root rot in this media. It is just so airy. The clay pebbles also help. The pot itself, you cannot really get more airy than this. And also it really doesn't sit in water, as you can see. Whatever water is left is stuck on the tray, but it does not touch the bottom of the pot. The important thing to keep in mind is that this pot is really, really airy. So if you have an orchid that likes to stay constantly moist, maybe this will not be a very good idea. Depends how often you will water it, depends on your environment. But for orchids like Phalaenopsis, I dare say Cattleyas, and I will have another experiment with a sort of a vendacious orchid, I think they are absolutely great. And I think the roots that will come out through the grills will be absolutely no problem. When it's time to repot this orchid, because it does not have a rim on top, you can just pull it out and the roots will be fine, so practically I don't think you will damage any roots. As opposed to planting an orchid in a completely clay pot, this has the benefit of being plastic, so the roots will not attach super strong to it, and also you can pull it on the top and the roots should be just fine. Now it's just a matter of time to see how this orchid will like it in the orchid top and in the media, so I'll definitely keep you updated with the evolution. I am a bit excited to be honest because it just looks really really pretty to my eyes. I also like the fact that it's heavy so I'm not gonna bump over it. I have a major issue with brushing against my orchids and bumping them over so I am excited. If this is something you would like to have then I will link down below to the store. You can see the whole variety, you can see the prices, you can actually buy. They are based in Germany so if you are from Europe it's gonna be really easy. If you are from the USA on the other hand just send them an email and ask how you can get this, ask for fees, and uh, so on.
Now in the following days, I will make another repotting using the orchid top pots because I think it's gonna be really cool. I'm gonna pot a sort of a vendaceous orchid in something like this. Vendaceous orchids like a lot of air as well. So I think this type of pot would be perfect for bandas, especially for those of you who cannot really keep them hanging. Maybe you have a small apartment and you don't have space. Maybe the orchid top will be an alternative pot for keeping vandas, but I don't know, we shall see. I'll make the video the following days. So right everyone, thank you for joining. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up and also share it with your orchid friends. If you'd like to see more videos from me, stay up to date with this orchid and with my other projects, just subscribe to my channel, I post daily. You can also leave me questions and suggestions for videos in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. And also you can visit orchidnature.com where you'll find care sheets, identification sheets and also you can talk to us in the forum section and share your orchid experiences with us. And if you click on the right side of your screen, you will see a video tutorial on how to care for Phalaenopsis orchids. Thank you for joining, I'll see you next time. Bye!